And from the rest of Africa, Nigeria's President Mohamed Buhari will join his colleagues from Niger, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire and Senegal on an enlarged ECOWAS mediation mission to Mali on Thursday, 23rd of July. This high-level mission comes on the heels of the visit of another ECOWAS delegation led by former Nigerian President Goodluck Jonathan. After three days of consultations in Bamako with Malian political stakeholders, the Jonathan-led delegation recommended the establishment of a national unity government and the recomposition of the constitutional court. But the opposition coalition M5, M5 RFP, rejected the recommendations and insist on the resignation of President Ibrahim Keita and the continuation of anti-government street protests, which have resulted in the destruction of government properties and the loss of at least a dozen lives. Mali has been enveloped in insecurity and uncertainty due to leadership crisis compounded by terrorism, jihadist insurgency, and rebellion by Tuaregs in the north and central parts of the country. Joining us live to make sense of all of this is Paul Ejime, who is a foreign affairs expert. Good to have you, Mr. Ejime. Thank you very much. Now, what, what is the importance of President Muhammadu uh, Buhari's visit or intervention in the Mali crisis, if I may ask you? Well, it's, uh, it is raising the... Um, uh, you know, the tempo of the engagement because um, recently four countries uh, in West Africa, Niger, uh, Ghana, and Senegal were to, to, to lead um, the high-level delegation mm -hmm. after former President um, Jonathan uh, came back to brief uh, uh, President Harris. It shows the importance the ECOWAS um, uh, region is attacking to this um, uh, conflict. And there's another one in growing also in Cote d'Ivoire. So it shows that because the reason is that um, Mali become an epicenter of uh, a breeding ground for terrorists and, um, you know, uh, that have attacked um, uh, Burkina Faso and causing mayhem. The danger is that um, if uh, an internal crisis in Mali is not um, set in time, it could and extend to the ocean and therefore uh, and cause this blight. So I think that is the the concern, and why now uh, it has um, escalated um, this uh, intervention this year mm -hmm. to the level of five uh, heads of state. Right. Um, so that that's the the important and um, in that. They will um, uh, be able to bring to bear uh, mm. authority on both the government and then the opposition. But remember, this is not the first time. ECOWAS in 2012 also has sent a similar uh, delegation with, um, um, you know, had issues. There was a coup there by um, um, Amadou Sanogo, Captain Sanogo, and which um, would not even let uh, the ECOWAS. Uh, uh, plane to land. But I, I hope this is not going to happen. Yeah. There is no coup, but there is uncertainty and there is insecurity in, um, in Mali. Uh, so, uh, which brings me to, to my next question. You know, uh, just what you yeah. said now leads to my next question. Um, why do you think the opposition is kicking against uh, all the recommendation, the recommendation by the former president, Jonathan-led uh, mediation team, and insisting that, you know, uh, President Keita must have to resign? Otherwise, they are continuing with protests, which, as you know, and as you have affirmed, there has led to a lot of destruction and loss of life and properties. Well, they are insisting on... Uh, Mali is a complicated and uh, complex issue. Um, you know, growing from the um, uh, insurrection in, uh, in the north, where the Tuareg and the Arabs and the jihadists, you know, the Tuaregs are looking for, they've been asking, and that, is, that predates uh, this time, it was uh, in um, the independent period. Um, you know, they want, they want independence in the north, mm. uh, the Tuaregs, but that has not happened. And that has com been complicated by the fact that um, um, President Keita, when he uh, got re-election, this is the second time he's serving, by the way, he got re-election, re-elected in 2018, and had promised that he was going to end this insurrection. He has not been able to do that. There is also economic crisis, and then um, uh, corruption, of course, 
and then they clamp down on the opposition. That is another thing. And then um, on top of it was the, the election that was held in March, mm. where the, um, um, the government uh, was uh, accused of using the constitutional court to overturn um, uh, 31, about 31 um, uh, seats in favor of, uh, in parliament, in favor of the ruling party. So it's um, a combination of factors. Mm. All these have, uh, and then uh, recently, in March, the opposition leader, the man, um, uh, Sumai Lastise, who ran against uh, Keita in 2018, was kidnapped. He's still missing. He's not been found. And then, uh, so that is the, all these have um, accumulated and uh, uh, reached a boiling point that the opposition are now um, uh, asking, you mentioned the, the opposition M5 uh, RFP. They are now, they have a coalition. In fact, led by now um, an imam. Imam Diko used to be a very pacifist um, um, uh, individual. He was uh, leading the peaceful process in the past, but now he has joined the opposition to tell you that uh, there is anger, there is, um, you know, uh, resentment, and then, um, you know, uh, opposition, the opposition is so strong against the, the government in Mali that they are now asking. So, they are, it is the, the level of, uh, um, you know, anguish and dissatisfaction. And the fact that the country, the government is not able to govern the south or the central part of the country. All right. So we have, uh, Mr. Ijeme. Uh, we have to but we are having a as well as the country. All right. So these are the, the, the problems.